Good. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Great to be with you. Great representation here, and, and it's great to be with you all at the University of Hartford for the Fox 61 Student News Award Ceremony. Uh, my name is Ryan Breton. I'm a meteorologist for Fox 61 News. Thank you. <laughs> can thank Jimmy for, for starting that. Good to have some team support. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with all of you today to, to recognize and celebrate uh, the work that all of you have put in this year and to celebrate those accomplishments together. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank our, and welcome our hardworking students, teachers, parents, family, friends, and distinguished guests, and we hope you enjoy what is sure to be an exciting evening for everyone. Fox 61 Student News is a nationally recognized, award-winning, innovative business and educational partnership created for Connecticut's middle and high school students that started three decades ago, so it's a long-standing tradition. And over the years, nearly 250 schools from around the state have participated in the program. Success stories range from students who have stayed in school because of the program to students who are now enjoying successful careers in broadcast journalism. And our goal is to give students a voice, a place to tell stories that matter to them, and as Connecticut's news station, your involvement and excitement helps promote our mission to make an impact in all of our communities. When we relaunched the program in 2016, we started with 16 schools. But today, we are very proud to say that Student News has over 150 participating schools around the state. Very impressive. In September, we held teacher workshops at the University of New Haven and here at the University of Hartford. And it wasn't long after that we started to receive story submissions from schools all around the state. We also host what are called Student News Labs, which bring together students and teachers for a workshop discussing stories, giving advice on how to improve storytelling. We would also like to thank our partners here at the University of Hartford and at the University of New Haven for their outreach to schools across the state. Uh, it's a good partnership that we have with them too. As of May 1st, the students have sent in over 100 stories, and each week these stories air in our newscasts on Fridays and Saturdays. So yes, they're actually on TV in the same newscast that we have professional stories running in every morning and night. They're also posted to our website, showcasing local stories produ produced by students, including all of you. Tonight, we invite you to share any pictures from the ceremony on social media. Hope you, hopefully you saw the little red carpet out there. Uh, and if you do so, use the hashtag Fox61 in your posts. And you never know, maybe you'll see them on TV or share it on our social media too. Uh, the stories that were submitted were reviewed by a panel of Fox 61 professionals within their respected field to judge the entries. Each story submitted was judged on uniqueness, creativity, presentation, and engagement. And we narrowed it down to the top three finalists in 10 different categories. In the end, the nominated story with the highest score was declared as the winner. Please join me in thanking the judges, which spanned all scopes of, of the station, for their time and effort in reviewing the many stories we received. Also, thank you to the many groups at Fox 61, which came together to help make this ceremony a reality. Our graphics and marketing teams for developing the slides and the videos you'll see, our engineering and news departments for streaming the ceremony live, and our sales department for coordinating sponsorships of the program all year long. And none of this would happen without the generous support of our Fox 61 student news sponsors. Uh, it's really impressive, the partnership that we have. And first off, I would like to thank Big Y World Class Markets, our presenting sponsor, for their generous award donation and partnership with Fox 61 Student News. Secondly, we'd like to thank and welcome our other partners, the Connecticut Higher Education Supplemental Loan Authority, or Ch CHELSA, uh, the Connecticut Office of the Arts with the Connecticut State Department of Education, the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling with the Connecticut State Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, the Hartford Wolfpack Foundation, Wheeler Connecticut Clearinghouse, and Area Cooperative Educational Services, or ACES. Please, let's have a round of applause for our generous sponsors. 
And I would now like to welcome Umberto Ormaza, the President and General Manager of Fox 61, who we're pleased to have with us here today. Thank you, Ryan, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I asked Ryan for some sunny days. Um, he wasn't sure he could promise the sunny days for the weekend, but thankfully we have him here today. So a round of applause for Ryan, our superstar meteorologist. So good afternoon, students, parents, teachers, friends, distinguished guests. Welcome to the beautiful campus here at the University of Hartford. I want to thank our partners here at the university for hosting us once again this year at this beautiful venue um, that has been such a staple of education in our community for so many years. My name is Humberto Hormaza, President and General Manager of Fox 61 and CW20. It's my honor to welcome you to the 32nd year of our Fox 61 Student News Program. Today we gather for this evening's awards in recognition of all the fantastic work and stories submitted. As another school year comes to a close, I want to thank you for your exceptional efforts and leadership. Through inclusion, passion, dedication, and commitment, we are building a better future for our community every day. Our state has a rich legacy in education. We are leading the way through best-in-class programs in nearly every sector. It is with programs like Fox 61 Student News that we contribute to such legacy. In my 20 years in broadcast media, I've had the pleasure of working alongside many exceptional journalists and professionals like the over 140 employees that serve every day at Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And I recognize the same talent and enthusiasm in this very room with you, our nominees, and our future journalists. Though we have always faced challenges, and most recently with COVID and more, we've always united and risen together with grace and dignity. And as our journey continues, we look forward to a promising future in which journalism and the impact it delivers will remain an essential part of our daily lives. Congratulations to all our nominees, for you are all winners. We're so impressed with your work and progress each day of your journey. Thank you to the parents. Our nominees would not be here today without you, without your love, your support, guidance. Thank you to our sponsors. Your financial support is part of the engine that keeps this program moving forward over so many years. Thank you to all our teachers. Your work is the foundation for a better tomorrow. We are grateful for your leadership. We know we can continue to count on you as we remain committed to, uh, co committed to growing and continuing our Fox 61 student news program, making an impact and serving the greater good of our Connecticut community. Lastly, thank you to our team at Fox 61. Your leadership in action over these past 32 years exemplifies how much we truly care and love our Connecticut community that we all call home. So congratulations to you all and enjoy the evening. Thank you very much, Umberto. And, and just a note, there are still some empty chairs. So for anybody who needs a seat, may be able to, to come into the middle. So just keep an eye out. There are still some spots that, that we see out there and we appreciate your kindness. Um, last but not least, we'd also like to thank our host tonight, the University of Hartford, represented by the Chair of the School of Communication and Cinema Program, Dr. Jack Banks. Uh, please join me in welcoming our host. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. It's good to uh, see all of you. I uh, just wanted to say the School of Communication and the University of Hartford are very pleased to host this year's Fox 61 Student News uh, Award event. And we are so happy to have students, parents, and teachers from Connecticut schools here with us tonight. Now, some of you have already been here before at one of our Media Day events. Any, anybody go to those? Uh, list? Oh, all right, we've got some people here. For those of you that haven't come to that, these are day-long field trips where students from Connecticut schools come to the university for a fun day of experiencing what it's like working in media. Uh, when you come here for that day, uh, you produce, uh, the students produce a TV show, a podcast, they take part in an interactive lighting demonstration, and the students also attend workshops 
where they work with leaders of the Fox 61 student news competition and the um, Impact Teen Drivers PSA contest for distracted driving. And in those workshops, uh, we give students tips on how to produce award-winning stories and campaigns. Uh, we have two of these uh, media days every uh, semester. If you would like to come to one of these, uh, bring your entire class from school, talk to me, or our admissions uh, manager, Mc Nicole Mazzarella, who is at our table in the lobby after, uh, after the uh, event. Now, um, we started hosting uh, this, this event about five years ago, before COVID, and I gotta tell you, I'm a big supporter of the Fox 61 student news program. I have consistently been uh, impressed with the passion, the dedication, the intelligence of students participating in this program. You call attention to important issues and events in Connecticut with your news stories, with sharp writing, engaging video, insightful interviews. The School of Communication wants to support your great work here because we know that wherever life takes you, you will have successful careers and be great leaders in our society addressing the many, many challenges we face. To show you our support and encourage you uh, to come to the University of Hartford, we've gone all out to give you these kitschy gifts. <laughs> who, doesn't, who doesn't want sunglasses like this, all right? Or let's see, I think it's like a, you know, a keychain of some sort. It's endless, it's endless. So act now to get those before uh, we run out of them. So yes, we are giving that away, but we are also showing our support for this program by offering $5,000 scholarships to every award winner tonight uh, that attends the University of Hartford. And just so you know, we're not cheaping out, all right? Um, some of you work in groups of three or four. It's $5,000 per student, yeah. all right? <laughs> you will be awarded this scholarship if you uh, apply, are admitted, and attend the University of Hartford. Now, you're like, I'm only in eighth grade or I'm in ninth grade. I don't want to go to college yet. That's fine. Just put that certificate in your back pocket. All right, well, don't, it's a nice certificate. Don't put it in your back pocket, but just hang on to it, all right? Because you'll be able to use that when you start thinking about where you want to go to uh, college. Um, and uh, I understand that we do have a, a Fox Award winner from last year, Danny Klein who uh, attends Killingly High School, who's going to be starting with us as a communication major this fall. We want more Dannys, all right? So for now, we want to congratulate all of the award winners along with everybody who showed that they have the drive, passion, and ideas to submit stories to this competition. Good luck to you all. Thank you very much, Dr. Banks. I think after that, I'd like to go back to college. <laughs> very, very awesome. Thank you for that. Uh, let's take a moment to recognize some of the people at the station who make the Fox 61 student news happen. Uh, first off, Liz Salvatore, our community marketing manager. Uh, she, this is her first year really running student news and has pushed it to new heights and helped bring more partners to the table to participate. Pate. Um, she's no stranger to the program, though. Uh, she's been involved as a leader, a committee member, a judge, but first, actually, as a student winning an award in high school. So life comes full circle. Thank you, Liz. Also, Freddie Mathis, uh, assistant chief photographer for Fox 61 News, who has directed the student news program for the last four years, in addition to his other duties. Freddie serves as amazing technical support and provides incredible feedback to teachers, uh, students, and on all their stories. And also today, he was even scrubbing down the storm tracker, so it would look uh, nice and clean for all of you to tour it today. Also, uh, Doug Stewart, our digital content producer. He is... He is the institutional memory 
of the student news program. Uh, he's worked with it since 1996 through not only its many changes, but also how we produce, consume, use media, all of those changes through those years. Um, he also makes sure the stories are produced, uh, that are produced or posted on our website and shared on social media. So thank you to Doug and to everybody at Fox 61 for that. And now it's time to honor the students, all of you. Uh, today we are presenting awards in 10 different categories. If you are a winner, we ask you to come up to the stage entering on my right and then leaving on my left. Uh, you'll receive your award, have a chance to say a few words, and take a picture as you leave the stage. Uh, this, this year's entries covered a wide range of topics. Uh, by the looks of it, the power of broadcast journalism is bright with the quality of work we, re we receive from so many students all across the state. So with that in mind, I would like to welcome our first presenter for Best in Student News, Feature News, and that is Fox 61's Jim Altman. Uh, Jim himself is a multiple Emmy Award winner. He's up for several this Saturday night in Boston, and most recently another regional Edward R. Morrow Award winner. So he knows something about awards, so nobody better to kick off the night, Jim. Thank you guys. How you guys doing tonight? Good? Let's amp it up a little bit. It's, this is a high school scene, a middle school scene. Let's hear it, everybody. Come on. <laughs> Welcome to TV News, everybody. This is not a joke. I'm on the air in eight minutes. I, look, there's my photographer, Bill. Chief photographer. He's like, Jimmy, why are you not outside with Dr. Banks? It's because I've got to do this award, which I'm actually, it's going to be much better than the live shot with Dr. Banks. No offense. So, it's true. But I got some free sunglasses out of this, so this is awesome. Um, feature stories are a chance to give viewers a deeper understanding of a larger issue. Whether it involves a person or a program, we get a better look at something that goes beyond the headlines. Great feature stories are memorable in their reporting, in their photography, and in their editing. And you guys know this because you wouldn't be sitting here if not for all of those talents that you employed. Were you able to find a great character? Were you able to tell us something that we didn't know? Were you able to find that cool quotient? A big congrats to all of you in the house, all of you nominees. It really means that your work all stood out. So, without any further ado, because I'm going on the air in six minutes, here are the nominees. Providing students from underserved communities a better chance. Nathan Cornoyer, Ethan Vasquez, and Bryson Sagat Erdine from Simsbury High School. The ABC House's goal is to provide a home for students and assist them with their academic needs. Uh, Simsbury ABC, it's a college preparation program. And we've had a great track record. A large percentage of the students who have gone through have been placed in college and have succeeded. Tabor Marino from Manchester High School, Connor Reganis and Jack Stokes. Tabor is 100% blind in one eye with 50% of his vision in the other. It makes it all the more impressive that he can hit shots like these. And Shapag welcomes a baby cow and lamb. Mia Maletti and Madison Molinaro from Shapag Valley High School. Um, this has been a great hands-on experience for students, and it's really exciting that they have a chance to do this every year. So it is definitely beneficial to have uh, Peppermint Patty, our adult cow, and her calf peaches on campus. Um, students have the opportunity to learn about all the animal systems that go into the beef world. All right, give them a hand. And the winner is... Tabor Marino, Connor Raganas, and Jack Stokes, Manchester High School. The sound of basketballs bouncing on the gym floor and the swish of the ball going through the hoop. These sounds are what fuel MHS senior Tabor Marino to persist through many obstacles so that he can enjoy life to the fullest. 
At MHS, many student athletes face forms of adversity that impact their path to success. For Tabor Marino, who was mentally and physically disadvantaged, his path was a little different than others. Gary Marino, Tabor's father, describes Tabor's experience with the team and how it positively impacts him. Hey, it's, it's like it's taught him a lot about responsibility. It's taught him how to be a great teammate. It's taught him how to be, you know, be positive when things aren't going great or if he's not getting playing time, he's cheering his team on. It's taught him so many things that are going to help him in the future. Additionally, Tabor is 100% blind in one eye with 50% of his vision in the other. It makes it all the more impressive that he can hit shots like these. Tabor loves basketball as well as his teammates. Jump, that's all. He helped me how to jump. Tabor brings a new energy and dynamic to the basketball team that he is beloved by. Tabor is every day, no matter post win or post loss, he always brings a smile to our face. Just love having him in the gym during practice and games. Not only has Tabor brought more energy to the team, he also adds much energy to the crowd as well. Throughout Tabor's time at MHS, he has been able to keep a positive mindset and be a role model to the entire basketball team. From Manchester High School, this has been Jack Stokes reporting. All right, uh, this was a little unexpected to say a few words, but um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Mr. Jones and Mr. Larson our teachers at Manchester High School. Um, this is both our, our first year doing broadcast, and um, it's been a pot, very great experience um, doing all of it, um, editing, filming. Um, huge shout out to Tabor, um, who is the feature. Me and Jack both had the pleasure of playing baseball with him um, throughout high school. And so being able to see how he's impacted so many lives, giving encouragement, giving um, everyone like a brighter, uh, brighter view on things, really. Okay. Are we good? Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, kind of giving everyone like a brighter view on uh, on life. Uh, when we heard about, um, you know, we, we reached out to Tabor's dad and we we're like, hey, can we do a story on him? He said yes immediately. Um, so with, with it was a no-brainer. We wanted to showcase his story and his passion, his love for um, not only sports but Manchester as a whole. So yeah. Excellent job, and uh, the winners will share the prize of $2,500. Very impressive. And by the way, this is the second year in a row that Manchester High School has won for this award. So way to represent in feature news. The next award is the Big Y Locally Grown Award. It's given to the best student news story that reports on local businesses, organizations, and initiatives. Uh, these efforts are operated by your neighbors um, and improve your family's health and the local, econ and the local economy. Uh, this award will be presented by Sh uh, Sam Chevalier, uh, the store director for the Big Y in Manchester. Sam. Thank you. Uh, so I had the pleasure of doing this last year, which was great as Chevalier. So <laughs> I had uh, the pleasure of doing this last year, and I didn't mess it up too much because I was invited back, so that's fantastic. Um, Big Y, the Locally Grown Award. We do that because we are local. In 1936, Paul and Jerry Moore uh, got a loan from some family for uh, about $800 and started their first Big Y cash market in Chicopee, Massachusetts. Since then, we've had a dedication to our local communities um, and a dedication to education. Since 1993, Big Y has given away $14 million in school supplies to area schools. We've given away $5.8 million in scholarships, and in the last five years, we've given away $440,000 to our, our employees or the children of employees uh, at Big Y. So we have a dedication to education. We have a commitment to our communities, uh, just as Fox 61 has a commitment to their communities as well. This program is amazing. This program builds communities from the ground up. It's an obvious dedication and commitment to education, which is why we're a part of it. 
we have that dedication and the commitment to education and, and building our communities from the ground up. This award is worth $2,000, and the nominees are. Finding the Soul in Soulberry, Avery Pepper, Alexandra Quillili, Thea D'Amico, Ivana Ortega from Chapag Valley High School. Soulberry wasn't always filled from floor to ceiling with unique products. This is their beginning. My mom's kind of had the idea for a long time with my grandpa's help starting it uh, down the road um, at a greenhouse for a little while and we were in there for a few months. And then we moved here because this just had a lot of character. WAG Central from Jonathan Law High School, Arlene Bonabong, Paige Jolly, Nicolina Salanto. Located in Stratford, Connecticut, WAG Central is a dog daycare center. They provide everything from boarding to daycare, and in addition, they offer grooming, training, swimming, dog parties, and baking homemade treats. And Rebel Dog Coffee Company, a local business focused on sustainability and giving back. From Farmington High School, Cecilia Kolinich, and Gage Barrow Kuleza. Another aspect of the business that Rebel Dog focuses on outside of the community is what's increasingly valuable to consumers, coffee production. It's important to make sure the coffee trade is sustainable. So farms make a living off their crops, make sure it's all ethically sourced. Well done by everybody, but our, our winner, Big Y Locally Grown Award, goes to WAG Central. Most high school seniors have part-time jobs at restaurants or as babysitters. Donaldson Law High School senior Paige Jolly spends her time babysitting as well, but not your typical child. Located in Stratford, Connecticut, WAG Central is a dog daycare center. They provide everything from boarding to daycare, and in addition, they offer grooming, training, swimming, dog parties, and baking homemade treats. With a team full of animal lovers, each person takes part in the animal care experience as veterinary technicians, dog walkers, doggy daycares, groomers, trainers, and everything in between. Established in 2017 and owned by Angela Pantalon, creating a social hub for pups has always been her dream. So my inspiration for starting WAG Central was my own dog, Lulu. Lulu was probably about eight at the time, and we needed a place to board our dog. I really couldn't find anything that met my standards, so I opened up a place that I really thought would be great to bring my dog, and luckily lots of others liked that philosophy and came along. At WAG Central, we're different than lots of other doggy daycares. Yes, the dogs get to play, but they also get to do enrichment. We do lots of fun things to really make a dog be part of our family here at WAG, but also make a dog be a better part of a family at home. Jonathan Law High School senior Paige Jolly works as one of the doggy daycares at WAG Central. Compared to other part-time jobs she has worked, she can confidently say that this is her favorite. What inspired me to get this job was my sister. She got a job here and she would send my family pictures and videos and I got really jealous and I decided to come here and get a job myself. I come here after school, which is daycare hours, and really what we do is we bring the dogs out in groups and we make sure that they're having fun, they're playing with each other, they're getting their exercise, they're happy, really keeping it under control, but also letting them have fun. Just take it from these animal lovers, working with furry friends could not be any more fun. Not only does the job provide a sense of security for these animals, but it provides a sense of happiness for the workers. From Donaldson Law High School in Milford, I'm Arlene Vanabong reporting for Fox 61 Student News. Um, this is a little unexpected, so I don't really have anything planned out. But first of all, I'd like to say thank you to the Fox 61 student news committees and judges for this amazing opportunity. Also, thank you to Big Y for the sponsorship. Um, thank you to Angela Pantalone, the owner of WAG Central and the founder. We really could not have this story without her. Um, my best friends, Nick and Paige, couldn't be here tonight. They're preparing for the softball championship. but. We also want to big, uh, give a great thank you to our teacher, Mr. K. Um, we both, all of us started broadcast this year. This is our very first year. We went into this class really knowing nothing, not how to write a T script. I didn't even know which way to put the SD card into the camera slot. Mr. K has taught us everything from the ground up, so really this award is for him. Thank you so much, Mr. K. Congratulations, excellent job to Arlene, Paige, and Nicolina. 
Uh, next up, the Connecticut Creative Futures Award is given to the best student news story reporting on the arts in Connecticut and careers in the arts industry. Uh, this is sponsored by the Connecticut Office of the Arts. The award will be presented by Colton Harris, Program Manager for the Connecticut Office of the Arts, Development of Economic Com and Community Development. Colton. Hey everyone, how you feel? Well, congratulations to everyone here. My name is Colton Harris and I'm a program manager at the Connecticut Office of the Arts. And we are our state arts agency, which means that our mission is centered in inspiring a culture of creativity across Connecticut. And what's so amazing about this awards ceremony and this celebration is that it all distills down to our common thread of being creative beings. And so all of us are artists, and this award is an affirmation of the commitment that we have as a people to knowing that our futures can be reimagined through any sort of bleakness, darkness, hatred, discrimination, but it starts with our creativity. It starts with our imagination, and our students deserve to be reminded of their value, their importance, and it's time out for the arts to often be relegated to side projects. And so this award is, means a lot to us because it's just an affirmation that the arts are critical. And as our director, Liz Shapiro, always says, the arts aren't just nice, they're necessary. And so with that, the nominees for this award are? Workplace, Workplace birthday, birthday, Sam, Sam Belcher, Belcher and Madeline Spina, Spina from, from Manchester High, High School. School. Workspace, a community asset on Main Street in downtown Manchester, recently celebrated its fifth anniversary of service. For the town, this birthday is truly worth celebrating. Let's celebrate this tonight. Let's continue to be this great place that we can celebrate the art in our country and around our community. Wings for Peace, Maya Rosado and Caroline Doyle from Jonathan Law High School. The Wings for Peace project aims to address the urgent crisis of gun violence and inspire peace through the National Unified Flash Mob Art Project. The organization is led by Lori Lewis, a Milford native who simply wanted to use the power of arts to help end gun violence and inspire peace. And student musicians step up. Macy Brazal, Grace Monatavani, and Maya Dobson from East Hampton High School. From the third graders playing the recorders to the high schoolers playing in Pirates of the Caribbean medley, a joyful community of over 500 students, staff, and administrators gathered into the high school gym. This tradition is important to the East Hampton community. All right, let's give it up for the nominees. And now for the winner. See, I tried to open it before, and it still got stuck. All right, but I got it now, so congrats to me, I guess. All right, so now the award goes to, and the award is for $1,000, and it is going to Workspace Birthday from Manchester High School, another win, Sam and Madeline. Holidays, birthdays, celebrations. These are milestone moments in everyone's life. Workspace, a community asset on Main Street in downtown Manchester, recently celebrated its fifth anniversary of service. For the town, this birthday is truly worth celebrating. Let's celebrate this tonight. Let's continue to be this great place that we can celebrate the art in our country and around our community. Stacy Zakin, the manager, believes the business gives a much needed space to members of Manchester to work in what they love truly encompassing the name Workspace. Yeah. <laughs> Workspace is a co-working meeting and gallery space. We're owned and operated by the town of Manchester. We provide a safe, flexible, affordable, hospitable space for people who want to start a business, operate their business. If they're remote workers and they're feeling lonely and isolated at home, they can come and work here and be part of a community. Highlighting artists within the town, Workspace makes it their mission to allow citizens to express themselves in a unique way. And through the galleries, we do a lot of work in terms of building a, a diverse, inclusive community. So it's a space for artists to show, but then it also you know, serves as a draw uh, for town residents and visitors to come and have a, a bit of culture. Even those who do not display their work, such as Tom Andrea, can see and appreciate the impact Workspace has had over the past five years. I think Workspace is the center, the heartbeat of Main Street in Manchester. 
through events like this, through their community outreach, through their knowledge of, of, of the town, they really have added a vital element to Main Street. And I'm really glad they're here. This celebration has not only been impactful to local artists and entrepreneurs, but all people of Manchester. With the help of businesses like Workspace on Main, our town continues to grow closer together. From Manchester High School, this has been Madeline Spina reporting. Uh, so yeah, I don't have much to say. I just want to give some thanks. Thank you to Mr. Larson and Mr. Jones for giving us this opportunity. Thank you to Manchester High School. Uh, they give us the opportunity to do what we love and experience what we love. And in this class, I found that this is what I really want to do with my future. I want to thank the students in the class for making this class enjoyable every day. Many of them are here tonight. Um, and I want to thank the Fox 61 Student News Program for giving us this opportunity and letting us do what we love. So thank you very much. Awesome, congratulations to Manchester High School again. Our next award is the Community Events Award, and here to present that is Liz Salvatore, as I mentioned before, our Community Marketing Manager at Fox 61. Uh, one of the many roles Liz plays is organizing this program and tonight's event. Uh, so thank you, Liz, and welcome. So I want to thank the students, the teachers, the family, and the friends for joining us tonight. It is eons ago that I sat where y'all are right now. So um, I know what it's like in that crazy anticipation. So I hope your participation in this program has been as enjoyable and inspiring as it was for me when I was in high school. We have all truly, truly been blown away by the talent of everyone who participated, whether they were nominated or not. I know that everyone that works at Fox 61 is sick and tired of hearing me all brag about you, um, but I really am. I was honestly so inspired by everything I saw from all of you. The future of journalism is sitting right here in this room tonight. And a special thank you to those educators. Your impact on these students will follow them for years, and I hope you all know that. The Community Events Award is given to the student news story that best reports on stories that capture citizen priorities, concerns, and perspectives on different issues of importance to many different communities around the state. The winners of this award will share a prize of $2,500. And the nominees are... Super Bowl versus Super Bowl. Emma Ribera from Cromwell High School. However, not everyone has the luxury of enjoying bounds of food on this day. To help mend this crisis, St. Josephine Makita Parish in Rocky Hill brings their confirmation classes together on Super Bowl Sunday to compete in games and the raising of non-perishable donations. Diversity concert tribute to faculty member from Simsbury High School, Nathan Cornoyer and Chiara Poladura. This year, however, the performance is a bit different. To honor the passing of Simsbury faculty member, Miss Banks, the founder of the Gospel Choir, it was really, really special because the students were showing the powerful part of being an artist. Keeping Native American culture alive. Aislinn Richmond and Jason Bochamp from Norwich Free Academy. I loved everything about the showcase today, but I particularly enjoyed the music and the dance and having the opportunity to see uh, and learn about another culture. People from the local Mohegan and Mashantucket tribes, as well as the Skadikok, Ulumbi, Halua, Saponi, and Crow tribes were on hand for the performances. Thank you to all of these great nominees. And the winner is... Keeping Native American Culture Alive from Norwich Free Academy. The state of Connecticut has a strong foundation of Native Americans within its history, and there is no better way to celebrate this than with indigenous people who showcase their talents through performances. Dancers wearing traditional clothing and musicians playing traditional music performed in front of Norwich Free Academy history students, NFA history teacher Lorraine Dooley. 
I loved everything about the showcase today, but I particularly enjoyed the music and the dance and having the opportunity to see uh, and learn about another culture. People from the local Mohegan and Mashantucket tribes, as well as the Skadikok, Lumbee, Halua, Saponi, and Crow tribes were on hand for the performances. Aaron Lam Meeches was the MC for the event and helped educate the audience on the music and traditional clothing. Great opportunity to be able to share uh, the native culture. I mean, we are um, in the traditional homelands of the Mashantucket Pequot and uh, um, Mohegan tribes. NFA's Native American Student Association was instrumental in helping to organize the event. Senior Maiki Naiska Plainbowl performed a traditional women's dance representing the Lumbee, Halua Saponi, and Crow tribes. I think dancing is a big part of our culture and our heritage, and I think just like we like to um, show it off so people understand. This performance touched many students and taught them more about indigenous people. Um. That was my favorite part, just the energy was so up there. Uh, also the friendship dance, like uh, getting out there and dancing around with them was pretty cool. It's not every day that we can witness indigenous tribal dancing and be able to make connections in school and within our strong Native American community in Connecticut. From the campus of Norris Free Academy, I'm Aislinn Richman with Jason Beauchamp on camera for Fox 61 Student News. Unfortunately, these students weren't able to be here tonight. Norwich Free Academy has their class night tonight. Um, so we will be accepting this award on their behalf, but we will let them know as soon as possible that they have won. Oh, they already know. I'm sure they're streaming it. Congratulations. Good to see some representation from Eastern Connecticut, too. Very cool. Um, next up the NJM Impact Teen Drivers PSA Contest, which is new to the program this year. Uh, please welcome Mackenzie Jemmy, the Education Outreach Coordinator from Impact Teen Drivers, and Erica Russo, Consumer Safety Supervisor from the NJM Insurance Group. Come on up. Hello, Connecticut's future leaders, influencers, and agents of change. Congratulations to the first five Fox 61 Student News winners. Very, very impressive work. My name is Mackenzie Jem, the proud education, Connecticut Education Outreach Coordinator for Impact Teen Drivers, and I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate the incredible work, dedication, and talent of the amazing students in this room. I also want to give a big shout out to all the teachers and advisors who enthusiastically said yes to the Just Drive contest and embraced hands-on learning. Joining me up here is Eric Carrasso and Linda Coles from NJM, our incredible partner and sponsor. NJM has a history of saying yes to our shared commitment to teen traffic safety and evidence-based education for teens, their influencers, and the communities they share the roads with. NJM makes Just Drive possible and puts a total of $30,000 into the hands of the Connecticut high schools that participate in this contest, including award prizes to the three contest finalists. Thank you, NJM. We are proud to partner with your organization to save teen lives. I will now hand the mic over to Erica to keep us going. Awesome, thank you, Mackenzie, and thank you to your passionate team at Impact Teen Drivers for all the work that you do in the teen traffic space. Um, again, my name is Erica Rosso. I am the NJM Consumer Safety Supervisor. For over 100 years, NJM has been committed to safety, and as a nationally recognized regional insurer, we take pride in our role as an advocate for teen driver safety. So on behalf of the entire team at NJM, I want to express our deep gratitude for the hard work and dedication shown to, by the Just Drive contest finalists, who are Foreign High School, Simsbury High School, and Wilton High School. Your social media campaigns, community outreach projects, and 30-second PSA videos have not only educated and empowered your peers and school communities to make safe choices as drivers and passengers, but also have made Connecticut's roads safer for everyone. We applaud you, we thank you, we celebrate you and your work and your achievements. And also a big thank you to Fox 61 for including the Just Drive category in this year's FSN Awards. All right, so let's get ready. Um, we're gonna take a look at the 
PSAs and then we're going to invite the schools to come up and we'll announce the winner. <laughs> Distracted driving is a major problem within the U.S., especially for teen drivers. Around 3,000 people die of vehicular accidents caused by distracted driving each year. Distracted driving not only affects you, but passengers and other drivers. Drive safe for your parents, friends, family, yourself, and other drivers. Think about how loss or injury can impact those in your life and families of other drivers. Here at Forum, we drive safely for peers, friends, family, and everyone else on the road. Who do you drive safe for? I got donuts. Can I have one? Oh Wait, give me one. Oh Be careful, God. there's a oh cop. God, oh! Sorry, we're, we're at a stop sign. It doesn't matter. You can't do that while you're driving. All right, on behalf of Impact Teen Drivers and NJ Insurance Group. Our third place winner is Four in High School. We are delighted to present them with a check for $5,000 for their work on the Who Do You Drive Safe For project. Uh, I want to thank Miss Farrell for always helping us with everything and also all the students who participated in our video. Second place winner is Simsbury High School. On behalf of Impact Teen Drivers and NJ Insurance, we're excited to present to them a check for $7,500 for their work on the Just Drive social media campaign. Um, I think I can speak on behalf of the group of us. We'd just like to thank Dr. Koo for guiding us through this. Um, we're the Digital Video 2 class, which started during the second semester. So from the start, it looked like we had a lot of time, but we really like worked till the last second. And it was a lot of fun working as a group. And uh, yeah. So I guess process of elimination. <laughs> On behalf of NJM and Impact Team Drivers, we were presenting Wilton High School with a check for $10,000 for their work. On do the job you want your kids today. Okay, hi, I'm Ethan. I was a kid in the video. <laughs> um, so first off, I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then everybody else who's been along here. This whole team's been great. Miss Naeem, our media production teacher, just been great. Um, 
Also, my mom in the back was in the video, and uh, my little brother, too. So just everybody that's been supportive, just want to thank them. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thank you to NJM, and congratulations to all the winners. Not only do we, do we have some future journalists in the room, but maybe some future marketers, too. Good marketing always an important part of a TV station, so good stuff. Congratulations. The next award is the Chesla Education Award. It is given to the best student news story that reports on education in its many forms. Here to talk about the award is Shannon Reynolds, a portfolio assistant with Chesla. Hi guys. All right, it is an honor here to celebrate these amazing students and scholars for their hard work and creativity. Um, again, my name is Shannon Reynolds from Chesla, also known as the Connecticut Higher Education Supplemental Loan Authority. A mouthful. Um, our mission is to help Connecticut residents with the cost of higher education through financial literacy, scholarship, and low fixed rate student loans. With the work that you have all done, there is no doubt that there is a bright future for you all tonight. It is my pleasure to announce, announce this year's nominees for the Chesla Education Award, the best student news story that reports on education. And the nominees are. No Suffield agri-science student makes, makes an, an impact, impact at the, the national, national level. level. Vincent Casahino from Suffield High School. It all started, all started when she began caring, caring for a new plant, plant during her time at the agri-science program here at SHS. As, As a Jewish student, she found its name, The Wandering Jew, amusing, and would often joke about it to her peers. That was until she did some digging on the origins of the title. Manufacturing at Manchester High School, Jeremy Zalora and Ben Donahue from Manchester High School. There's a huge demand for manufacturers in Connecticut. There's thousands of employers, and um, it's a field that pays quite well. Last year, Manchester High School was given a grant of $390,000 towards improving the school's manufacturing program. And Workforce Development Breakfast from Weaver High School, Jonathan Morales, Daisy Garriga, Jamila Johnson, Liberty Blanco, and Seraphim Bill and Belly. Ready Seats Hay is the key to the future for many students in Connecticut, opening doors to low income and minority students, where they're all given the opportunity to network, learn, and be seen. And the winner is uh, from Manchester High School, Manch uh, manufacture Manufacturing at Manchester High School, Jeremy Zora of Ben Donahue. With so much talk about going to college, it often seems like other post-secondary career options get lost. Today, there are many different trade skills that can be learned and provide well-paying jobs without having to go into debt. Created a few years ago was a new manufacturing program at Manchester High School. So about five or six years ago, um, we didn't really have a formalized manufacturing program. We had a lot of technical education courses that delved into those topics that manufacturers value. But um, we realized at that time, again, about five years ago, that we really needed to um, design a structured pathway within the manufacturing um, career cluster area. So the reason that we did that is because there's a huge demand for manufacturers in Connecticut. There's thousands of employers, and um, it's a field that pays quite well. Last year, Manchester High School was given a grant of $390,000 towards improving the school's manufacturing program. Here's what one of the teachers of the manufacturing program, Monica Okendo, had to say about the program. You get to work with your hands. You get to make stuff that, generally speaking, not a lot of students, unless you go to a technical school, you're not really expo exposed to or even try how many people have actually worked with metal. Fewer and fewer people have worked with wood, working with doing cabinetry and, and, and woodworking, much less with metal. 
that in and of itself is just absolutely cool to me anyways. I get really excited about that. Um, I love working with the lathe, I work, love working with the mill. And one of the things I find is that students, when they get exposed to the lab and they get excited about the lab, they start falling in love with specific machines. Like if they enjoy the lathe, that's the machine that they go to. If they enjoy the vertical mill, that's the machine that they go to. Not only do students get the unique experience of working with industry level machinery, but they are also given a path to success out of high school. Here's Sky Gliden, a senior in the manufacturing class. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, make a lot of money in the industry right out of high school. You don't need a college degree or really a lot of education. As long as you know what you're doing and getting yourself into, you can really make some good, good money. With the workforce being so dominated by college-oriented jobs, there's been a high demand for skilled laborers. Behind me, students are working to become the trade workers of tomorrow. From Manchester High School, this has been Jeremy Zalora reporting. So great. Um, first, I'm Eric Larson. I'm uh, one of the teachers here with my co-teacher, Ryan Jones, from Manchester High School. And we gladly accept this for our students. We have a great bunch of students in our classes. And they're all, most of them are here. Unfortunately, this one could not attend tonight. Um, but I do want to take, uh, take the opportunity to uh, thank Chesla for this, uh, Fox 61, and all the, all the donors that have come here today. This is such a great opportunity, a great incentive for our, our students to really want to learn about the industry and really excel in something that's a little bit beyond the regular classroom. Um, a phenomenal job to all the people that are putting together, all the students that are putting together stories today. I commend you. Thank you. I don't want to keep anyone. I just want to say Mr. Larson's a little bit humble. He's also the tech head department head, so he has a hand in the manufacturing lab that the, the story was on on too. So um, definitely very appreciative, and we'll make sure the, uh, the check, the big check and the small check get in the right hands. Thank you. Congratulations, Manchester High School. Excellent. The next award is the ACES Diversity and Inclusion Award. It's given to the best student news story that reports the range of identities and experiences that exist in the world. This award, award will be presented by Timothy Howes, a Deputy Executive Director of Area Cooperative Educational Services, or ACES. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, I will say that this is our second year that we participated, and we're so excited. I couldn't wait to come back this year, even though earlier today I was like, oh my God, the allergies and everything. I'm like, can I do it? But yeah, I'm going. And I'm so glad I did because the talent that we see here tonight is incredible. So the future of Connecticut and beyond is definitely in good hands. At ACES, what we do is we work with education. We're one of six edu educational resource centers within the state of Connecticut. We represent the cities and towns from Waterbury down to New Haven, approximately 15,000 educators and about 105,000 students, not including our own students that we have within our schools. We have magnet schools and special education schools, as well as special, edu special education services. So seeing all of the education and all the educators, congrats to all of the hard work that the students and the educators did together to produce some really amazing pieces that I enjoyed watching and it's like, wow, this is excellent. So tonight, we're going to take a look at and give away an award that is for diversity and inclusion. And the nominees are... Milford Adaptive Programs. Macy Rascal from Jonathan Law High School. The Milford Recreation Department has teamed up with the staff of Camp Happiness, a camp which focuses on those with special needs and disabilities, but is also open to campers of all varieties to provide these services as well as many more for those with special needs. Coffee Wednesdays at WHS, Westbrook High School's Matthew Izzo. After high school, many people with disabilities struggle to find employment, and that is where Julie and Joe step in. We're helping, whether it's through Westbrook High School or other organizations, individuals learn some of the skills that are important when they move on from the high school. Bean Z and Company, 
Summer Garropy and Olivia Ramsdell from Manchester High School. Opening in 2017, Beans has run with the intention of representing every part of the community in their employment process. Over 80% of adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities face unemployment. All right, you're all ready for the winner? All right, Bean, Z, and Company, Manchester High School, Summer Garropy, and Olivia Ramsdale. Come on down. Beans and Company, a cafe that serves coffee and a purpose in the community of Avon, Connecticut. Anything else? Opening in 2017, Beans has run with the intention of representing every part of the community in their employment process. Over 80% of adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities face unemployment. Co-founder Kim Morrison is trying to use her business and inspire others to change that statistic. We have a 50-50 business model where 50% of our adults have intellectual and developmental disabilities and 50% don't. So um, it's a good cross-section of the community. You know, it's a population that wants what we have. They want purposeful employment. They want, you know, meaning in their day. Just like anybody else. That's, that's how we treat them and treat everybody. Everybody's treated the same. While the loyal customer base and staff could be described with the word team, it's recognizable that they are so much more. It feels like family here and it feels awesome to be here. Go to person on the customers and on my coworkers. As someone who, uh, who can confidently say that they're on the spectrum, the best part of it being included in this team is basically just no judgment. No matter who you are, you are welcome to have Beans and Cups. It's what keeps so many people coming back. Beans and Co's delicious menu and welcoming service aren't the only things that make it so special. This cafe is brewing a new outlook on inclusivity in the workplace. This is truly a place where everyone belongs. From Manchester High School, this has been Summer Garrity reporting. So first off, we just want to say thank you to Mr. Jones and Mr. Larson um, for teaching us everything that we both know in the last two years. Um, if any of you know Liv and I, you know we're two peas in a pod. So this award definitely is a highlight of both our friendship and our high school careers coming to an end. Um, Beans and Company is a wonderful business to represent, so thank you so much for giving the, uh, us the opportunity with this award. Excellent work. The next award is the Not Just a Game Award, and it's given to the best student news story that reports on one of the following gambling-related topics. Potential risk factors for developing a problem with gambling, uh, educating the public on warning signs, and framing problem gambling as an addiction. This award will be co-presented by Caitlin Brown, Director of Programs and Services, and Mallory Schultz, the Prevention Training Coordinator with the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling. Welcome. I want to thank everyone for participating in this category. We're very excited to be a sponsor this year for the second time as well as securing funding for the next year in partnership with the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. And thank you, Trish, for getting us involved. Um, we wanted to have this award to, uh, to increase the awareness that gambling is not a risk-free activity. Conversations with youth have traditionally been about alcohol, tobacco, vaping, and other substances, but rarely focus on gambling. So this category aims to educate youth about potential risk factors, especially accessibility and the social acceptance. So we are looking forward to collaborating with the Fox 61 Student News Program again next year. This award is worth $2,500. And the nominees are. These 
Sports Gambling Awareness, Kathleen Regan and Carolyn Miner from Manchester High School. Although sports betting has made a huge impact on addiction, there are still ways you can play while making sure you do not go overboard, says sports better James Termini. The way I look at it is whatever I put in, I'm willing to lose all that money. Teens exposure to gambling, Shane Baran from Norwich Free Academy. Unlike traditional gambling, such as poker tables or slot machines, companies like FanDuel, DraftKings, and Caesar Sportsbooks have made it more accessible with apps and restaurants, all to make betting easier. And teens are taking notice. And the dangers of underage online gambling. Spencer Peterson III from Hall High School. So a 13-year-old who looks at this can naturally going to check. I'm 18 years old, of course. Right. I know if it's 18 or older, it's going to be adult stuff, and I want to see that. Right, exactly, and that's 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 really the, the biggest thing. Whether I use this or not, or I can just get in and play and have fun. And the award goes to Kathleen Reagan and Carolyn Minor, Manchester High School. Drugs, alcohol, and vaping may be what comes to your mind when you think of addiction. But one that might not come to mind as quickly, sports gambling. Sports betting has become a serious issue not only around the country, but especially in Connecticut, where it has been legalized since October of 2021. Paul Tarbox, Director of Public Policy and Communications for the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling, reveals a service that is combating this issue. We operate the state's 24-7 problem gambling helpline. And what that does is we have people available 24-7 through phone or chat, and you can speak to us and we can actually connect you to services. According to the CCPG helpline, there has been an uptick in younger callers, even some who are under the age of 21. In fact, 4% of these callers in CCPG's Region 4 are under the age of 21, showing the impact that illegal gambling has on teens. Although sports betting has made a huge impact on addiction, there are still ways you can play while making sure you do not go overboard, says sports better James Termini. The way I look at it is whatever I put in, I'm willing to lose all that money and not care, right? I need to have that money in and not care. So it shouldn't be enough money that it's like, oh shoot, there's, there's, that, there's my bill or there's my groceries or anything like that. It has to be a really small amount of money. Here at Manchester High School, Pamela Phillips, along with about 25 students, make up the FACTS Club in order to raise awareness and connect students to resources it takes to combat addiction. Uh, we got $5,000 this year to put out a public service announcement and then find a way to get it out to the community. Through counseling and services like those held here on Ms. Phillips' office, there has been so much progress in our community and state, but there's so much more to be done. If you or someone you know needs help with gambling, call the Connecticut Council on Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-888-789-7777. From Manchester High School, this has been Carolyn Minor reporting. So first off, I want to thank Mr. Larson and Mr. Jones because they've helped me so much and um, it made me really love broadcast journalism. Um, Carolyn couldn't attend tonight, unfortunately, but I want to thank her. This is our third time being nominated for Fox 61 Student News Award. We are nominated our sophomore and junior year as well, and we've been co-directors for two years, so we've just been working together forever. And she made that amazing graphic. And I also want to thank all of my classmates, too, because they make the class so fun, and my parents as well. <laughs> Congratulations. Next, we have a new award this year. It's the Y21 Award, sponsored by Wheeler Connecticut Clearinghouse and the Connecticut Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Here tonight to talk with us about this award, Sarju Shah, the Director of Prevention and Health Promotion, and Greg Carver, the Program Coordinator for the Tobacco Prevention and Enforcement Program from the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services. Welcome. Everybody, this has been an exciting night. This is my first time here. Are you guys excited? 
Are you, are, are these are just, you guys are just doing an amazing job. So thank you for having us here. So I'm, my name is Sarju Shah, this is Greg, and we're from the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services, and I am really short, so I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. So, um, do, so we're talking here about prevention. So you guys look at seatbelts, you look at eating your broccoli, that's all prevention, right? It's about being healthy. So that's what we do at DEMAS as well. So DEMAS's prevention system is really designed to promote the overall health and wellness of individuals and communities by preventing and delaying substance use. So we're not doing the problem gambling piece of it. We're doing tobacco and vaping, but we're still cool. Um, <laughs> But in short, like we really seek to equip um, all the young people and trusted adults, your parents, the mentors, teachers, um, in the lives of these students with the tools to make healthy decisions. Thank you for your participation in the Demas Fox, uh, Demas's Fox 61 student news efforts to raise awareness um, about the laws in place to protect the young people when it comes to tobacco and electronic cigarettes. Now, Connecticut was one of the first states in the nation to increase the legal age to purchase these products to 21 years old. This is really big because it is, it is rough. That's all I have to say. But your Y21 report helped provide important information and awareness about the dangers associated with tobacco use and now vaping um, e-cigs. So retailers need to understand why there is an age restriction. Young people need to understand that nicotine is highly addictive and, and it, you know, it causes harm, it makes you kind of stinky, you know? But the report has made a difference. You, what you guys have done makes a difference. So with that said, um, the nominations are, the nominees are. Y21, Spencer, Spencer Peterson III, III from, from Hall High, High School. School. So we don't want to sort of mess with the brain's natural processes with the dopamine system when the brain is still developing. Still, despite knowing this, companies such as Juul, which has pulled in billions in revenue over the past decade, continue to push forward with this targeted marketing scheme. Vaping, the controversial trend. Saqib Hussain from Cromwell High School. In terms of vaping and prevention, it's a multi-pronged approach. One does start in the classroom. Sometimes addiction, what it is, it's, a, it's an opportunity to self-medicate. In terms of the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, we do have hall monitors. And, and vape laws for a cause. Jerry Morris and James Taylor from Daniel Hand High School. While vape retailers are keeping this law in check in the local community, Daniel and high school health teachers are also teaching students why this law is important. The major benefit if they, for that law is the fact that it gives them the ability to have more mental growth. It's as a health professional, like a health teacher or just a person. Wow, some seriously great reporting uh, all night tonight. And uh, this is a great program. I came last year, I was so excited to be here. Uh, and I have to uh, say uh, we have special thanks to our commissioner uh, at the Department of Mental Health Addiction Service, Nancy Navarretta, and to the Connecticut Clearinghouse Wheeler Clinic. Uh, Aisha Hamid is here, and thank you very much. And the winner is uh, Galib Saqib Hussain. Hussain. <laughs> Sorry about that. Although e-cigarettes have been around for a decade, vaping rates have skyrocketed in recent years, especially among teens. In terms of vaping and prevention, it's a multi-pronged approach. One does start in the classroom. Sometimes addiction, what it is, it's, a, it's an opportunity to self-medicate. In terms of the day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, we do have hall monitors, and, and that is part of their job is to sweep around, pop in. Uh, you know, most of the vaping activity that we see happens in bathrooms. Many of the students who vape are unaware of the punishments they might face, and many simply don't care. Depending on the scenario, the punishment is different. If you possess, it's a form of an in-school suspension, uh, and if you are caught using, it's a form of typically an out-of-school suspension. An anonymous CHS student agreed to share his reasons behind vaping. I vape because the stress of school has been getting really intense this year. I found vaping as an escape a way to alleviate my stress I've been feeling this school year. It's not about, you know, catching the consequence. It's, it's about catching the help. It's an opportunity to help the student, and that's really what we want to do. Teenagers are affected by nicotine and similar substance differently than adults. For them, the effects can be severe. It affects their developing brain differently than older adults. Um, 
and it impacts their memory and their concentration more. A misconception that's around there about vaping, that it's healthier than nicotine cigarettes themselves. It's kind of like the upcoming trend. It's like the new alternative to cigarettes. We hardly ever see cigarettes anymore. Some of these teens are getting vapes from places you wouldn't expect. So most students get their vapes from their friends um, and sometimes even their family members. You can buy them on the internet. Most kids and students I talk to always say that they've got it at a store. They'll never tell me the store or where they've gotten it from. Sometimes the state uh, does, you know, cracks down on some of these convenience stores that are selling to underage kids. A recent CDC report revealed that over 2 million high school students admitted to using a vape product. And that number is only increasing. I am Saqib Hussain, and this is for Fox 61 Student News. So I didn't know I was going to win this, so I didn't prepare a speech, but I want to thank Mrs. V and Mr. McGuff for being a really good uh, guidance. They were a great coach, and I feel like they were the biggest fan for my work. And without them, I wouldn't even know uh, there was a award system like from Fox 61. And I want to thank you guys and for all the information you guys provided last time I was here. And thank, for, thank you all of you for being here. Congratulations, awesome job. Also, oh, do you want your paper? There you go. <laughs> also new to the program this year, a category I'm very excited about, sports. Um, not only are sports a point of pride for all high schools in Connecticut, uh, but it gives students an outlet uh, to you know, be a part of a community, a part of a team. Uh, build camaraderie. I myself was a three-sport captain in cross-country and track. I wasn't the best athlete, but I, I really enjoyed every single aspect of it, and I think that's something that really came through in a lot of these stories you will see about sports, because it's not just about winning games. Here to present the sports award, we're thrilled to have Eric Hansen, Vice President of Business Operations for the Hartford Wolfpack. Welcome, Eric, and congrats on the season, too. Well, I uh, just want to say, unbelievable job. I wasn't really sure what to expect uh, today, but these, uh, these categories have been great, and everybody's done such a great job. Um, again, like I said, I wasn't really sure what to expect with this. Um, the, uh, the Wolfpack Foundation, for the last couple of years, has really been hurting. Um, we get most of our funding at games, and um, we went a season without playing with any fans. Last year was a hard year, but this year was fantastic. Uh, we came back bigger and stronger than ever. So, um, you know, happy to say we'll definitely be back next year. Uh, next year I'll have Alex present, you know, the voice of the wolf pack instead of me. I don't, I don't do this kind of stuff. But, um, again, um, thank you guys for having us here, and um, here's the nominations. The, the Making of a Ninja, Taylor, Taylor Mooney from, from Cromwell, Cromwell High School. Just, it feels like you're flying in the air almost, um, which I find really fun. Evan Baumagen has competed in ninja events for the majority of his life. This year, he'll be competing at some of the best in the country. High School Basketball introduces Shot Clocks, Brianna Wallen and Mia Gilbert from Manchester High School. This offseason, on September 15th of 2022, the CIAC voted to adapt a 35-second shot clock for boys and girls high school basketball starting in the following season. And Hall High School jumps into the digital arena with new eSports program. Adam Ward and Matei Panatisor from Hall High School. Like other school sports, eSports meets weekly and participates in competitions, even at the state level. eSports teams train weekly to keep up with the competitive environment. Honing in on the precise movements and strategies takes hundreds of hours of practice and experience. <laughs> Congratulations again to everybody, and the winner is Manchester High School. Hi, 
High school basketball games in Connecticut will become faster paced in the 2023 to 2024 season as there has been new rules implemented into the game. This offseason, on September 15th of 2022, the CIAC voted to adapt a 35-second shot clock for boys and girls high school basketball starting in the following season. CIAC Director Greg Simmons was one of the people responsible for this implementation. But in 2022, the National Federation of High Schools adopted a shot clock and said that our, their federation school, our member schools could use a shot clock. So we brought that in and we uh, brought it to our boys basketball and girls basketball committees. Those committees debated it, they changed it, they did all kinds of things to it because remember, we have to make sure that the member schools, the schools that we, we regulate, wanted the shot clock. The adoption of the shot clock began with a proposal from the CIAC Boys and Girls Basketball Committee and has brought many split opinions on whether this will benefit the game. It'll speed the game up a little bit. That you'll have the ability to, when you're down late in the game, the only way you can stop the clock now is to foul or to steal the ball. And that, that's not a, many people believe that's not a great way to finish the game. They want it to be played out like a basketball game, not just the fouling and fouling going on. Player Quentin Ford, guard from Manchester High School Boys basketball team, shares his take on the shot clock. I like the new addition to the shot clock because we're a more defensive team and we like to speed teams up, and I think it will be better for us towards the end of the game because teams like to hold the ball. The time is ticking on the remainder of their season, but for now we wish the players good luck on their final normal games. With the inclusion of the shot clock, we hope that the players can move swiftly enough in time before their time runs out. From Manchester High School, this has been Ron Alon reporting. We're so honored to get this award, and we just want to give a big thanks to Jarson and Lo oh, Jones and Larson for um, teaching us everything we know, because this wouldn't be possible without you guys. So thank you. Congratulations and another award for Manchester High School. <laughs> Very impressive. We are down to uh, the final award for the evening. So thank you all of you for staying through the duration of the event. We really appreciate it. And congratulations to everybody who was just nominated. That in and of itself of more than 100 stories is, is really impressive. And as I mentioned before, you can go on YouTube and on our website, fox61.com, and watch back some of these uh, stories if you're interested in how other schools you know, maybe approach things a little bit differently. Um, but tonight's award, the final award, is Fox 61 Best in Student News Award for Hard News. It's given to the best student news story about current and timely events. And this award will be presented by Samaya Hernandez, a reporter at Fox 61 with a long background in hard news, having worked in Connecticut uh, both in print and television for years. So she is a great person to present this award tonight. Welcome, Samaya. Thank you, Ryan. Hello, how's everybody doing? All right, almost ready to get to the end of it, but this has been such an inspiring evening. So on Friday, around the same time that you were enjoying lunch, 36 workers in New Haven went to pour wet cement and something went terribly wrong. And some of the workers ended up being carried by that wet cement down into the bottom basement of a building under construction and they were stuck in six feet of concrete that was beginning to become solid and rescue workers had to save them. On Monday, around the same time that you were probably eating breakfast and getting ready to go to school, a man called his mom and said, let's go for a walk. And on that walk, he submerged his mother in water and strangled her to death. That is hard news, and that's the kind of stuff we cover every single day, and it's not always easy to cover. 
And to do it, you have to go to the site, you have to find the authorities, you have to ask people questions, and you have to answer questions, who, what, when, where, and why. But I don't have to tell any of you that because the students that submitted in this category clearly understand that. Liz was not exaggerating when she said that she was beyond impressed by what you submitted because I watched the submissions in this category and I was blown away. They were active shots. They were interesting stories from examining how we dispose of our trash to looking at the future of robotics and fire safety during Christmas time. You guys clearly understand what hard news is and you understand how to cover it. And there's one thing that you do even better than we, than, that we do, is social media. <laughs> you're the stars on TikTok, you know how to handle your phone, and you're the future of journalism, so we are very impressed. This award is worth $2,500, and here are the nominees. We from from trash, trash to, to Treasure, treasure. From, from Daniel, Daniel Hand High School, High School. Uh, Deacon, Deacon Wilkins, Wilkins Juliet Brenza, Brenza, and Bryce Mallory. Mallory. Yes. Someone, Someone else's, else's trash is another, another person's, person's treasure. treasure. The, the towns of Madison, Madison and Guilford are striving, are striving towards converting food waste into energy. energy. The co-collection co pilot program is a free trial for all participants to see how food waste management would work in the future. Boston Dynamics from Killingly High School, Zoe Miller and Calvin Sandberg. It does a lot of dances, does a lot of cool moves. Its practical applications are probably most impressive, but watching it go upstairs, watching it fall downstairs on an unfortunate occasion is also fun. But yeah, it's just fun watching these robots walk around the building and do their thing. This is probably the coolest company out there. Fire, Fire safety in the, the winter, winter season. season. We tend to have heat. Azam Hostelettler and, and James Allen. According to the National Fire, Fire Protection Association, Association electrical, electrical failure, other electrical, other electrical malfunctions, malfunctions, and any heat sources placed too close to trees led to more than half of the home Christmas tree fires from 2016 to 2020. And the winner in the hard news category is from trash to treasure, Beacon Wilkins and Juliet Brenza and Bryce Mallory. Someone, Someone else's, else's trash is another, is another person's, person's treasure. treasure. The, towns the towns of Madison, Madison and Guilford are striving, are striving towards converting, converting food waste into energy. The co-collection co pilot program is a free trial for all participants to see how food waste management would work in the future. The state is facing uh, a solid waste crisis. Um, we're generating more trash than we can really deal with as a town community and state community. Um, we should all be trying to do our part. The towns are distributing a one-year supply of special color-coded bags to up to 700 households in both Guilford and Madison. At the end of each week, participants will tie up the bags and place them outside to be collected. Once the bags are picked up, they're on the road to the Quantum Biopower facility in Southington, Connecticut. It's going to be saving on landfills. Uh, space and it is a um, saver for the environment. We separate the garbage from the liquid. The liquid goes through uh, multiple of tanks. Um, at that point it decomposes. It creates a methane gas which we use to turn our generator. Currently we are powering approximately 750 homes. With the increased necessity for green energy in Connecticut, many residents have signed up in hope for a greener future. Is as the climate changes, each household can make a difference by taking a small step like this. To the Quantum Biopower Facility, this is Juliet Brenza reporting. That was really awkward. Um, the sound was on, so I don't really know what happened, but I'm going to keep it short. I'd like to thank Mr. A, very inspiring teacher, very helpful, and Fox 61 Student News. Thank you. Great job. Uh, can we get a round of applause for everybody, award winners, nominees? Uh, 
this group definitely set the bar high. Uh, very impressive looking through all the submissions, watching a lot of the uh, reports myself within my own newscast before I do the weather. You know, I learned a lot from the various pieces uh, this year. And you all are the next generation, not only of journalism, but also of our viewers, too. Um, media is changing, how we consume information is changing, and being connected with your local television station, I think, is really important. So we want to thank all of you for that and for your contributions to this program. And we hope that it will continue to thrive and grow in the years ahead, too. So thank you. Um, there's no question about it that every year with technology getting better, with enthusiasm growing, uh, the competition gets tougher and tougher, and I'm sure next year will be, be just as competitive. Uh, hopefully you can tell your friends in other towns or at schools within your own town that may not be involved about this program. We're always looking to expand. Uh, you can go to our website, box61.com. There is a student news section where you can find information about getting involved. And also, please share your pictures and accomplishments on social media using the hashtag Fox61. As I mentioned before, you never know. You may see yourselves on the air tonight at 10 o'clock or tomorrow morning, too. Uh, on behalf of all of us at Fox 61, thank you very much. If there's anything we can ever do to help you, please reach out. And hopefully the wildfire smoke has cleared up a little bit out there. Uh, the weekend should be much clearer. Have a good night, everybody, and thank you so much.